everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I decided on a short video I've got to get this ready for taking it to Tennessee in a few days. I'm leaving on Wednesday to go to Tennessee for a week and I will be giving these uh, diamond paintings to my granddaughters. This is my youngest granddaughter. She gets this one and uh, my oldest one gets this one. She gets the Disney Princess one, and I've already completed this one, completely done. It's sealed, it's uh, painted around the edges. I use the same uh, uh, canvas wrapping techniques from this one as I did with the other one uh, that I made a video for, and if you're not familiar, I will put the put it like right up here somewhere, right there, will be a link to that video of where I canvas wrapped the unicorn diamond painting. Uh, one thing I did do on both of them, I noticed that it doesn't stretch it really tight. Um, so what I did was I kind of beefed up this center section because this was kind of loose and floppy. As you can see now it's kind of hard and, and feels more like an actual painting canvas. And what I did was I beefed it up on the inside. I got some foam board. And I cut some foam board to fit the exact measurements of the inside of the frame. And then I got some, uh, and I sprayed, used some Elmer's spray adhesive and just sprayed the back of the canvas uh, and put this foam board in. And of course I laid it flat like I have it now, but I laid it flat on the desk. And then I went and I purchased at Michael's, they're not very expensive. Um, <clears throat> Excuse my voice. I was out until 3 o'clock this morning driving for Lyft, so <clears throat> I'm kind of... I went to Michael's and I bought these. Uh, they're just wooden dowels, square wooden dowels, like that. Um, I bought two packs of them. They come in various sizes in there and they're just kind of randomly thrown together as different sizes and stuff. So uh, I picked the four best ones out of each package and uh, the nice decent size and I used some uh, the Tombow aqua glue and I put them down in the corners or in the edges there as you can see along each side to kind of help hold that foam board down and keep it from being pushed back up and uh, I glued it to the side and to the foam board very very tightly and then uh, in order to hold the foam board in the middle I got some of these wooden planks at Michael's as well uh, they're not very expensive. I think they were like three or four dollars a piece for the wood and the foam planks, or for the dowels and the foam planks. And so, yeah, they weren't expensive. I just glued them straight down to the seam in the middle of the two pieces of uh, of uh, the foam board. And it really beefs up the painting quite a bit without adding a lot of weight. <clears throat> so it looks really good and now when you hold it up light won't shine through it in a window or anything and this one here is already sealed as you can see I've already sealed it um, it's got a nice sheen to it and it looks really nice and I mixed up some of the metallic paint I had metallic red and metallic white and I mixed up and made some metallic pink and it is metallic neon pink so this will glow under a black light so yep that one is ready to go And now I've got to get this one sealed and I've got to get it ready to go. I have not, I've already put uh, clear duct tape. As you can see, I use the duck brand transparent duct tape around the edges. And whatever was hanging off the bottom here, I just used my hobby knife and I cut it <clears throat> nice and straight using the wood as a guide. And of course, I beefed this one up in the back as well, just the same way I did that one. And so it's a nice solid core there uh, behind it. Uh oh, and I just spilt some water. That's what happens when you have a smaller desk than you have room for. Be all right. I didn't spill it on anything important. Oh, except my GoPro batteries. Yeah, that didn't help. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, this one here is ready for me to seal and get ready to go 
let me take a little bit of light away from the subject here so you can see it better. There we go. A lot better. Okay, so when I seal it, the first step I do is I look around the edges, especially the edges. If I have, if I always wrap it before I seal it because sealing causes it to kind of stiffen up and makes it really hard to bend the, the sides around the, the framing. So the first thing I do is I look around my edges to make sure I don't have any missing drills or any loose drills. And of course I look over the whole painting too to make sure there's no missing or loose drills. And then what I do is I grab, this is a smaller version, it opens up like this. It's basically a lint roller, but it's reusable. You can, it's like a rubbery thing here, but it's really sticky. Um, they do sell these as a part of a kit with the roller with a handle. And then you've got a bigger roller with a handle, a long handle like you can use on the floor. And then you've got the small travel size, pocket size lint roller that you can use. Um, and it's washable. You just, uh, when you get done using it, you just take and run it under warm water and use your finger and it rubs all of the fur and everything it picked up, just runs it right off down the drain and you have a nice, you let it dry and you have a nice fresh sticky thing. Uh, the brand name, they were as seen on TV, it's called the Sticky Vince Offer. If you haven't seen the infomercial on YouTube, look it up. It is hilarious. Um, but uh, Vince Offer had these on as seen on TV. It's called the Sticky. S-C-H-T-I-C-K-Y and I plan on getting the bigger kit and having the one with the, the roller like we, that we normally use to roll the diamond paintings with and they have one that's like that but I use this all over the whole thing because I do have a hank and a hank is a fur factory <laughs> so uh, I end up with a lot of fur on my paintings when I get done so I have to get all of that off before I put any kind of sealing down so all I do is just run this along the run this along the painting and you'll see it it's really sticky you'll feel it and it's picking up an awful lot it actually picked up a couple of <laughs> picked up a drill along the way there too um, you have to watch for that because of course you are using a sticky item so it did pick up a drill, which I just popped back in because I'm going to seal that down, so no worries about the drills. Um, every now and then you'll get some stuff that's stuck to it that is down between the drills and it won't come out. Um, for that, you can use your tweezers or a hobby knife. Um, right here I've got a little something there, a dark spot that just like something gooey stuck in there there it goes got it out okay whatever that was I don't know yeah I just go over the whole painting get all the fur I can all the hair I can and as you run it across you'll feel it getting less and less sticky um, that's because it is picking things up and putting it on the roller and the roller itself is getting a lot of residue and stuff on it But it still will pick up the stuff. It's just not as sticky, which is probably a good thing because you don't want to just peel all your drills off to There we go. And now you'll see you've picked up all of that gunk off of the surface of your painting. Hank is acting really weird over here. And so yeah, now I can just, later on when I get done, I'll just go run this under warm tap water and it'll all just flush right off of there and it'll dry to a nice sticky lint roller again. I would definitely advise picking these up. Even the entire set, uh, the sticky set, is on Amazon. It's not expensive. So I would definitely advise picking the whole set up. Okay, so now that that's done and it's all lint rolled, there's no more hank stuck to my painting um, what I will do is I seal it and all I use is regular gloss Mod Podge um, I got the big 32 ounce bucket here um, and I use one of these foam 
one of these foam brushes. They're the best for this because they're wide, they're flat, nice and even strokes like that. And so what I do with the Mod Podge is I open it up. Of course, your little paper thingy never stays in the cap like it should. And then what I do with the Mod Podge is I just kind of, I keep a bowl of water, just tap water, lukewarm, you know, tap water. I dip the sponge brush up to about the top of the angle, uh, if you can see there. I just dip it in there like that, get it kind of coated. Maybe that's about as much as you need. And then what I do is I dip the brush in the tap water. I don't squish it in the bottom or nothing like that. I just put it in the tap water like that to get it wet. And then I just start on one side over here. Uh, one edge doesn't matter where start like right here and just brush it in and then just keep brushing it until it smooths down inside of the inside of the drills um, down in between the drills and you're gonna see a lot of bubbling and stuff like that but don't worry about that because when it dries you won't see it I don't put a thick thick coat in um, just a nice even thin watery coat and you know, reapply it to your brush as necessary. And this shouldn't take very long to dry. Um, not very long at all. Um, maybe, for safety's sake, let it go about an hour. You'll see it. You'll definitely see it when it's dry and you'll know it by looking at it. it it's it's really easy to tell because it'll the milkiness will go away and it'll just turn clear and very very glossy you won't lose your sparkle if that's what you're worried about you will not lose your sparkle I've never lost sparkle on one yet from Mod Podge so I will test out a couple of other uh, sealing options uh, I have I do a lot of, I used to do a lot of plastic scale modeling, uh, like the testers plastic scale models. And I used to use, I used to do NASCAR models. So they're always really glossy cars. So what I would do is I would buy the spray paint I needed for the color of car I needed. And testers makes hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of colors of spray paint. Um, but they also make a gloss, um, a gloss clear coat and it's in spray form and I want to try using that on my on my one of my paintings I'm gonna to try to pick a painting that doesn't really matter a whole lot to me as far as whether or not it it keeps its sparkle and all that I mean it's gonna be one that I don't really worry too much about Just going to do the Bob Ross thing here. Yeah, little X's, little X's, yep, yep. And do it just like Bob Ross. So, just continue this till you get the whole thing coated. This is a 70 by 70, so yeah, it's taking a little longer. Um, but yeah, just kind of get it nice coating there down in between your drills. And get it even make sure it's even make sure the whole canvas looks just like this like uh, let me get you a close-up on it real quick see how that canvas looks like that down in between make sure the entire canvas looks like that you don't want to have you know you don't want to have it looking like that in one spot and then like that in another so you're just going to keep swishing across there until you get all until you get all of it coated um, and coated evenly. And it's going to take a little time. And this isn't something you want to rush. Or hurry up and get done with. You just want to 
take your time make it pretty because the finished results are well worth it and then you won't have any drills coming off no popping no nothing all your drills will stay put forever unless something really catastrophic happens but this will get down in between those drills where there's gaps and it'll fill those gaps so you won't have those anymore and it'll just be a nice smooth painting with lots of sparkle and sometimes you can actually do this with your brush and you get a lot more of the stuff out which will help you fill those spots in a little quicker like right in there and right in there I need some and right in there and this is how it works Yeah, and also make sure your pets don't jump up here while you're doing this, but that's pretty much common sense. I shouldn't have to tell you that. <laughs> All right, so at this point, I will speed it up a little bit for you. So you don't have to sit and watch this constantly going on and on and on. Because, well, you know, this could take an hour. <laughs> Bob Rossing it up here. So yeah, I will uh, I'll speed this up for you and I will see you back here when I have the main part of the painting finished and sealed. And then we will go on to the next step. So speed it up now. Okay, there we go. It is now all coated. Uh, it's very, very nice, thin, even coat over the whole thing. Let me bring you down to it and see. You'll see there, it's a nice, nice, even coat over the whole thing. This will now dry. It takes about an hour, um, as long as you keep animals off the desk. Hank is uh, jumping up here. There, I got him off. But yeah, nice even thin coat over the whole thing. There's no uh, no spots that are, well, maybe there's one or two, but those you can always take your brush while it's still drying and make sure it's a wet brush. It's been sitting in the water. Don't want it overly wet, so squeeze out some of the water on the rim of the glass or bowl or whatever you're using and just kind of go and hit those spots as you go. That way, there we go. Because you'll see where it starts soaking down in between the drills and where there might be some gapping. Sometimes you'll get um, where air bubbles in between those gaps will pop and it'll leave you a, a gap still. And what we want to do is fill those gaps. 
and having the Mod Podge all the way around the drill ensures that the drill will stay nice and down in on the canvas and it'll be locked in from all sides so there we go it is now all done ready to dry as soon as it is dry we will check back and I'll move on to the next step so I will see you in a few minutes Okay, I wanted to point this out. Uh, it's been drying for about 15 minutes or so now. And I just wanted to point out, as you can see, all that milkiness that appears when you're sealing will disappear as, you, as it dries. So you can see there what's already mostly dried. And you see it hasn't hurt the sparkle at all. It's still very, very sparkly. Uh, you can still see areas where the milkiness is still there, and that'll dry as it that'll come out as it dries, like right there and in the middle of that red, like right, right there. As that dries, that'll clear up and it'll turn clear again, just like it is right there. So yeah, it's uh it's about halfway dry. Like I said, it's been about 20 minutes or so. I've been sitting here watching it. Uh, it's like watching paint dry. <laughs> That's the best way to put it. Um, it's not bad. Uh, there's no smell. I mean, yeah, it smells like Elmer's glue pretty much, which isn't a, a horrible smell. So, uh, so yeah, I will uh, pause this and we will be right back when it is all dried. All right, it's been about an hour. Everything is dry except for one little spot. It's the last section I coated before I shut it off and that's right up in here I've got a little a little area where there's still some milky white in between the drills um, but that should dry pretty quickly and uh, then this will be completely done as you can see let me see if I can uh, lift it up here there is no loss in sparkle at all it is completely sealed you won't have to worry about drills falling off or coming off any longer uh, no more popping drills everything is pretty much cemented in place at this point so now that I've done the top I will do around the sides um, like right along you know along this side here I'll coat over top of that uh, uh, duct tape that I put there that clear duct tape because there are spots on the corners here where the clear duct tape kind of lapped around the corner like right there and I don't want that to peel up so I'll just I might just even just hit those corners and that's about it and then um, I will go over the whole edge all the way around with uh, just white acrylic paint uh, bought it at Michaels uh, I think I showed it in that other video and I'll just go around that whole thing with the white acrylic paint I chose white because the predominant color in this painting is white and with the you know the unicorn is white the clouds and all the little stars are white so yeah I will uh, I'm gonna do that so let's uh let me just go in here and we will me take you down some to where you're down more level with my with my desk There we go. Now you are down more level with the desk. And I can move my chair over here. <laughs> and let me move you over a little ways. There we go. All right. Now with this, I'm just going to let it come off the edge of the desk a little bit. Let me move this back. Excuse my mess under my desk because that's where I keep all of my diamond paintings. <laughs> well, parts of them. I've got my diamond art club stacked down here and my big tote full of drills and my empty ever moment tube from the Hank custom that I'm working on currently okay so what I'll do with this one is let me uh, squeeze out 
I'm gonna squeeze. I've been have I've had my brush sitting in that water for a while, um, so it's you know it's pretty wet. It's pretty full of liquid. Um, I'm just kind of squeezing it out, getting all the excess liquid out of the sponge, and uh, because in this case I'm going to put almost straight Mod Podge on the sides. Um, I don't want a lot of liquid mixed in with it, so I've got my Mod Podge on there. And I'm just going to apply it nice and smoothly on here. Just like that. Keep the pointed edge there below the drills, like such, and just pull straight down with it. And reload the brush as necessary. You don't need a lot. You don't need a heavy, heavy thick coat there. Just, just enough to put a seal over the over the duct tape. We don't want it to run, we don't want it to drip. And you're just going to do that all the way around the edges. So what I would suggest is, it might take a while because you're going to want to do one side and then turn it and do the other side. And The issue there is that you're going to get your hands in it, you're going to smear it on your desk or your work surface, and you take the possibility of it drying on your work surface and then your painting is stuck to your work surface and then you take the risk of maybe damaging it as you unstick it. So as you see I'm not putting a thick coat on just a thin little one little layer Now we're just going to let that dry. And if there's any hairs hanging down off the bottom, just grab them and pull them off. Mod Podge won't hurt. It's really nothing more than Elmer's glue is really all it is. Uh, so if you touch it, get it on your fingers, it'll dry right off just like Elmer's glue. won't hurt anything. So there's that side done. Now I'm going to go against my recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to turn it around because I've already gotten pretty much most of the stuff off the edge anyway there. And I'm going to flip it around a little bit. I don't see anything leaking onto my desk. so. And I'm going to do this side. Now this side doesn't have any duct tape on it. I, Because the canvas actually went all the way to the bottom, I actually had to trim part of the canvas off in order to uh, get this to work. Um, so... There's no duct tape at all on this side at all. And in a perfect world, your canvases will all have enough uh, left over on the edge that it would cover the whole stick. But no, not in this case. Uh, most of your China male diamond paintings don't have enough canvas on the side. Diamond Art Club, I'm not going to see a problem with. Diamond Art Club, you have plenty of extra canvas on the side. And I think it looks the same for uh, Diamond Dots, Dreamer Designs. Um, they all have about quite a bit around the sides left over. So yeah, you shouldn't have too much trouble with those. But a lot of your China Mail ones probably won't have a lot of excess canvas around the sides of the drill field. So, just got to be prepared for that, and that's why I use the duct tape. One, to help hold it down to the, the wooden stick, and two, it also uh, just provides you a nice flat surface on the side. Let's 
spin that around a bit so you can see where I'm at over here. As you can see, I'm not really putting a thick coat on because I'm already starting to cover this area here. And when that dries, it'll dry clear anyway. So you'll never even know there's anything on there except that it'll be glossy. But that gives me a nice base to work off of when I'm ready to paint. And there we go. Got two sides done. Let's see, I got down to the corner there. Yeah, this is uh, this is being special. Uh, really hard to turn a, 90, a 70 by 70 diamond painting on a small desk area. But there we go. Yeah, see, I got the corner done too. So, okay, we'll let those dry real quick. And I will use a napkin or a paper towel to wipe some of the excess off my hands. And I will pause this video and I will finish up the rest of the sides. I will let that dry and then I will demonstrate painting. Okay, well, now as you can see, all of the milkiness here has dried. It's no longer tacky or sticky. Uh, it's mildly, mildly tacky. However, the Mod Podge instructions do show and say that once it dries clear, uh, after about 15 or 20 minutes after application, you can add another coat of Mod Podge. Well, I'm not adding another coat of Mod Podge. I am going to go over this with acrylic paint. Um, so it should be safe to do so at this point uh, because it has dried for, you know, at least 30 minutes. Uh, and as I said, it's it's nice and clear and glossy. You can see the gloss coat there on the on the the canvas part next to the drills where it's dried. So it's very smooth, very clear. Uh, you still feel the texture of the uh, uh, of the duct tape that I've got on there. You can see you can see it there. You can still feel that texture, so that should translate over when I brush it with the paintbrush and the, the paint. You should still be able to see that kind of canvas uh, texture there. And so that's what I will do now. I will go over it with, I have Artist Loft metallic white paint. I have a whole kit of metallic colors, including neon colors that I can mix with the metallic. I'm gonna use the metallic white. Uh, I've got my little tray here that I use that I bought at Michael's as well when I bought the paint. And I also have a set of the uh, Artist Loft. Uh, these are the fundamentals level uh, paint brushes. I'm using a half inch brush. As you can see, it's not going to take up a lot of space, but it allows me to get a little more precise along that edge. Uh, in fact, it's flat on the top, so once I put the paint on it right, it'll chisel that top and I can get right up against that edge and uh, not get it all over the drills. So what I'll do is I open up the paint. Well, I've pre-mixed it in the thing. You really don't have to because it's acrylic. It's not oil-based. So, But I mix it up in the tube just by kneading the tube a little bit. And take the top off. And squeeze a little bit of paint into one of my little trays there. That should be enough right there, probably do the whole painting. And then I'll take my brush and I'll put it in the paint, get a good bit of paint on the brush, load it up pretty good, just like Bob Ross says, load it up. And then what I want to do is I want to put it in here and I want to, I want to get my nice chiseled edge like that. And then I will just start on the edge here and I will just kind of take it right up to the edge of my my drills, like that. And I'll put it on. And you don't need a real thick coat. Um, 
do one small coat first to find out how well it coats. And you can see where the edge of my duct tape was there, where it looped around the side. And then you're just going to paint. And then this doesn't take long to dry because it is acrylic paint, so it's not oil based, so it doesn't take days to dry. It just takes a matter of an hour or two, you should be okay, depending on how thick you put your coat on. And you might want to put a second coat, especially over the area where that green line is around the edge of your canvas, if you didn't trim that off before you. I probably should have trimmed that off before I uh, mount, before I stretch the canvas, but it doesn't matter, an extra coat of paint over it will help hide it. And you're going to go all the way around your edges just like this with it. And when it dries, your brush strokes should, for the most part, disappear. I try to get it right up in that crack between the drills and the, and the canvas. And if you did your Mod Podge right, your Mod Podge would actually be in that little crack. But uh, and on this side of the painting, I didn't do that. so. We don't have that little spot there covered. So I'm doing it with this. The paint will help hold that down when it dries. There we go. As I said, I probably will go over this with a second coat. And wait until it dries and see what it looks like. out your excess along there like that. <clears throat> and that's all there is to finishing up your painting after you do your canvas stretching. Your sealing, your painting the edges and making them look good. And it'll be suitable for hanging on the wall. This is the point where if you have animals, you don't want to let them anywhere near what you're doing because this is going to take a while to dry, so make sure you put it in a place where little fur factories won't jump on it or get up against it, or where you won't brush up against it while it's drying, um, because that's not a good thing either. Get right up in that edge there. Just like so. Alright, I will finish painting this up. And I will return back when it is all done. So I'll see you then. Okay, well, it's been 24 hours. I got all four sides of it painted now. Uh, they're all done, they're all dried, and they are ready to go. So there you have it, that's how we do the ceiling and painting of the sides of the stretched canvas, uh, the way I use the DIY canvas stretchers. And I got it all sealed, it has not lost a bit of its sparkle. As you see, it is still very, very sparkly, just like it was done. And what I will do now is, let me go grab my Disney Princess one. Yep, I'm knocking stuff over. 
and I'll let Hank entertain you for a second. And there we have it. We have both diamond paintings are now complete. Let's try to adjust this camera up a little bit. There we go. I'll bring it back for you. There we go. We have both of them complete. They were both sealed and paint, had the edges painted exactly the same way as I showed on the unicorn. And they are both complete. They are ready now to be given to my granddaughters this coming week when I go to Tennessee. So, yes, it is a time-consuming process to get them done. Um, it took me, what, an hour to, what, an hour to seal it and let it dry and it takes a couple of hours to paint all four sides and then let them dry as well. Um, it, it takes a little bit, but they are both very well done. They're not going to have any drills popping off at all. And I think they're going to last for quite a long time, just the way they are. So yeah, I hope everybody has a great weekend. Um, it is Sunday right now, so I will be going live this evening, and so I will see you all in my live. Uh, you'll probably see me in the live before you see this video, actually, because I've still got to edit it together and get it uploaded, so it'll be uploaded probably for Monday morning. So, until I see you all again, rock on, y'all.